then coming to jejunum ileitis suppose there is a inflammation involving the jejunum and the ileum in that case again here you have got involvement of the absorptive surface area so patient can have features of mal absorption and steatorrhea very important so patient can have nutrient deficiencies uh, patient can have steatorrhea so these can happen in case of the jejunal plus ileal involvement and patients can have diarrhea and what is the reason why the patients develop diarrhea it can be due to bacterial overgrowth bile acid malabsorption because ileum is important for the uh, enterohepatic circulation for reabsorbing the uh, bile acid but if there is an ileal involvement you can have bile acid malabsorption leading on to a bile acid diarrhea as well intestinal inflammation is also one factor that can lead on to diarrhea and also diarrhea may be a consequence of the enteroenteric fistula as well okay so this is what happens when there is a jejuno ileitis now what happens in crohn's disease when you have got a colitis so colitis can present with low grade fever malaise diarrhea and a crampy abdominal pain sometimes hematochezia and i have already told you gross bleeding is uncommon okay you may get a hematochezia some blood in stools but gross bleeding is uncommon and when you have got a colonic structure again you can have bubble obstruction and fistula is uh, another problem you can have fistula between the colon and the stomach wherein you can have a feculent vomiting and fistula between the colon and the small bubble wherein this channel can result in malabsorption direct passage from the small bubble to colon can result in malabsorption as well okay now perianal disease is common again with uh, crohn's disease very rare in case of ulcerative colitis uh, you can have uh, skin lesions like uh, skin tags anal canal lesions like fissures ulcers or stenosis uh, perianal fistulas as well as perirectal abscesses so these are the manifestations when you have got a perianal involvement in crohn's disease okay you can have upper gi involvement though it is very rare so you can have an can have a, a gastro duodenal disease so in that case the patient has nausea vomiting and epigastric pain and advanced cases of upper gi involvement can have gastric outlet obstruction okay right